My friend, my friend, we're going to do a Tracy Chapman song, Give Me One Reason. I'm going to show a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of blues instruction, and I'm doing this because we're doing it with a student, and I'm so glad we're doing this blues. Now, don't get me wrong. Blues can be like... Or it could be like a... This is just another expression of blues. It's not the 12 bars. It just goes back in between the one, four, and five, gives a strong five, drops to a four, ends with the one. Has a little lick at the outro, which I'm gonna show you. But this is one of those songs you should learn yourself after getting the core. It will help you float around, and I will give you a leading start there. And we'll go over some rhythms. Here we go. F sharp major, we're gonna leave the E string open. And walk it up to the second fret. Open, open, first, second, chord, second, chord, second, chord, B, and then we're gonna play an A shape. So the two chords we're gonna be working with, E major and A major from a different chord, are the bass chords when we move up in the cage system. So F sharp major, B major. The next chord we're gonna do is gonna go up a whole step from the B, now count it. That's a half step, whole step, B, C sharp. Play that major, you got it. It's gonna drop right back down to the one. So that feeling of, we're gonna have these tied in, that's a pickup note. So we've got to tie together eighth notes. Do, 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 do. You could also do A, B, B, C. Any variation you want, I think on the album it does just like, Something like those lines. Up to the five. <clears throat> Doesn't go back to the five there. The whole thing about this, it keeps it pretty smooth throughout the whole time. That, uh, give me one rip to stay here. I'll not turn my back around. I would say play with the full bar chords, then remove your pinky somewhere through here and start exhibiting the seven chords. F7, when we play A without the middle note, drop it down to the bar that's already there, we get B7, looks the same as an A7, B7. And then when we go up here, we get C sharp seven, you guessed it. Another way that I like to show you to play these chords are like this. <clears throat> We're gonna take our first finger, put it right here on the first fret. Second finger is gonna go on the D string, and third finger is gonna go on the G string. Second fret, second fret, third fret. Now all those sound kind of funky together. Switch that to this fingering, and I can guarantee you that the back fat of this finger will mute the next chord, the A string, and that will sound awesome. Give me one chance to stay here. This finger that's free and available, put it down on the string that's already being played, and then keep it there. So when we're ready, we're gonna move these two to go on the two strings around it. So, fingers on the D string. These two strings, after we play this groovy, awesome, delicious chord right here, ow! We're gonna keep that finger there and then drop that to the A string and then to the G string, covering the D string. That's a B7. You know what, throw down the pinky as well, right there our nine function and then when we scoot that up to the fourth fret a whole step away it's gonna be the same rhythm except now we're giving some jazz overtones give me one reason to stay here and i'll turn right back around give me one reason to stay here i'll turn right back around All these notes that I'm playing are from that chord. Just moving them around. So that over the top of our standard chords really works. The only other thing I want to do is show you the layout for the major chord. F sharp major, <clears throat> when we go one, two, three, four, five, six, we can go here all the way up to our seven and then resolve back to the one. But what I want you to see here 
because when we're playing through this chord, we can use this full scale to play through, and a mixolydian mode sounds really good. So we'd have F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, and then we'd have F sharp. The difference between having that E there, E natural, rather than the E sharp, going right back into the, I'm sorry, the E, the E natural going into the um, F natural into the F sharp that doesn't have our T do, which the F is actually called E sharp. But yeah, when we get rid of that, we get that backwards triangle that works both for these chords. So try and work on those seventh chords. And also we can see those seventh chords at different places. Yes. We can see those all around this fretboard. So what we're going to want to do is work in one quadrant first for this. So that you can get pentatonics all over the top of here if you want to. <clears throat> but what I really like you to do is to see these as just basically being bar chord, bar chord, bar chord. You can play it as a jazzed up chord. And it's the same thing. And then at the end, maybe just give it a little pizzazz. Uh, it does go from a... There's a signature lick. You can do just something along the lines of five on the G, scoot up to the sixth fret and pluck them together. E and the G, go down in half steps to the third fret. So it's. And then when we get to the fourth fret, don't go to the third fret. Put one finger on the third fret and then put down your F sharp. That's gonna kind of essentially go through the idea of playing. And then down to a major. So major seven, major seven, major seven, minor. So what we're gonna do is cut out the middle note to define whatever it's a major seven or a diminished or a augmented. We're not gonna go through the process of doing that, we're just doing the outside. So six, five, four, three, two. Have fun with that too. Fun tune. If you have any questions about it, put it in the comment section below. Other than that, awesomeness.